Welcome to a very special show. And even though it's about Snapchat, the company, and a very exclusive conversation with Evan Spiegel, the CEO, this show and this video won't disappear like your posts on Snapchat. Now, Snapchat is huge and it's not even a 10 year old company. And just like all great ideas, the idea behind Snapchat came as a Eureka moment. Evan Spiegel, Reggie Brown and Bobby Murphy were junior year Stanford University students and suddenly realized that the biggest problem with social media was anything you posted was permanent and would come back to haunt you at some point. They came up with this great idea of a social media app that enabled users to post photos and videos that disappeared from the site after a few moments and it was an instant absolute hit especially with the millennials and the younger generation in july 2011 the co-founders released peekaboo the precursor to snapchat now they relaunched it with major add-ons as snapchat in september 2011 so like i said it's not even 10 years old Snapchat isn't about capturing the traditional Kodak moments. It's about communicating with the full range of human emotion, not just what appears to be pretty or perfect. That's what Snapchat CEO and co-founder Evan Spiegel wrote in his first post on a Snapchat blog in 2012. And of course, the rest has become part of history. But you know, there's also a small little history behind this exclusive show and conversation with Evan. He and I were slated to meet up in March for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one in person. But COVID-19 and the pandemic had other plans and erased our snap of an idea. Thus, after many moons and many conversations, we finally decided to do it this way, the way everyone's doing it now, virtually. So let's get started. Hi, Evan. How are you doing? Great to finally, finally get to speak with you, even though we're doing it like this and not one-to-one. -one. Okay, let's get started. First question. 2019 was a very dynamic year for Snapchat in India. What is your vision for 2020? It's a great question. First of all, I just want to thank you so much uh, for having me. I'm really excited that we could do this, even though we're not in the same room. Uh, it's great to be together. So thank you. You know, as you mentioned, uh, it has been a really exciting time for Snapchat in India and in 2019. Uh, we really were able to start building our team in India, which has been so exciting for us. And now as we look to 2020, a lot of what we're doing is building upon that foundation uh, that we have with our team there and building upon some of the activities uh, that we've been doing. So for example, in 2019, we did a lot of workshops in schools around India to teach people how to build lenses and augmented reality. Lenses are our augmented reality experiences on Snapchat. And we had so much fun in all these different schools around India. And of course, uh, with the uh, coronavirus, we have brought those online. And so while we're still uh, doing those uh, different uh, educational seminars and, and things like that to, to teach people about our augmented reality products, we've actually been able to scale them even more broadly by doing them online, kind of like uh, what we're doing right now. So I think uh, we, our team has certainly been really creative uh, about their efforts and really trying to extend what they're doing uh, through the internet, uh, which has been a lot of fun. Very, very true. Okay, so what are the innovations being introduced at the 2020 SNAP Partner Summit, which is, I think, really the main reason why we are talking today? Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, well, our team's been working really hard. And the reason why we really love the Partner Summit is because it allows us to celebrate all the people who work together with us to support the Snapchat community. So we have partners who work with us in augmented reality and in content. Um, and you know, even on our uh, map. And so it's been so much fun uh, really to release new products together with them. Some of the things we're most excited about, we have a new product coming out called Minis, uh, which are little experiences you can use together with your friends. And they were built on top of our gaming platform. So we built this gaming platform that allows you to play games together with your friends in chat. And we learned that we could do so much more than just play games with this platform. We can build uh, little experiences that you can use together with your friends. So, you know, for example, you can use a service to buy movie tickets together. You can watch the trailers for movies, pick your seats and uh, buy movie tickets. You could uh, make predictions together with your friends about what's going to happen in the future and see who's right. Um, so minis have, are a really fun product uh, for people to use together 
Another thing we're really excited about is called Camera Kit. And mm -hmm. Camera Kit is a way to bring our augmented reality camera and all of its powerful features into your app. Um, and that's something uh, that we're really excited about because people are looking to build uh, an augmented reality, especially now with coronavirus. Brands are really excited about the opportunity to power things like Try On, um, which, which is really exciting. So mm -hmm. we think that Camera Kit can help brands uh, you know, bring some of those ideas to life. Um, and one of, the, one of the other things we're really excited about is called Snap ML. So that's a new feature inside Lens Studio that allows people to bring their own machine learning models into uh, their lenses and use that to transform the world around them. That's just a couple things. You know, there's so much stuff. Uh, it'd be impossible to mention all of it, but those are some of the things I'm really excited about. You know, I have to ask you this. How has COVID-19 impacted the new idea of innovations introduced through the year? I mean, there are people that are saying that COVID-19 has forced innovation in a very different way. Well, I think for us, you know, predominantly what it's done is accelerated uh, a lot of the things that we thought would take a long time. So one of the examples is e-commerce. We've just been blown away by e-commerce adoption around the world and the acceleration of that. That's not something I think is going to go away. So I think e-commerce is here to stay and it's something that brands and businesses and people are really you know, gonna care about a lot more and they're gonna expect, I think, an even more compelling experience uh, when they're using e-commerce products. I think, you know, same for augmented reality. We thought it would take five or 10 years for, for people to get really excited about try on, you know, beauty brands right now are really focused on using augmented reality to help support uh, try on and product trial. Um, because, you know, for example, going to a, a beauty store right now and using the physical products, sharing those physical products is something people are concerned about. So it's definitely accelerating a bunch of these changes. You know, we believe that the actual stay at home orders and those lockdowns that that will lift at some point and people, you know, humans really love being around other humans. We're social creatures. And so I do think people are going to want to get back to hang out together with their friends. Um, but I do think it will be uh, important to think about, you know, augmented reality, e-commerce, even, you know, digital communication, the way that we're talking right now, all of those things, I think, you know, will play a lasting role. But uh, we, we do believe people are going to really want to hang out uh, together as soon as they can. How do you plan to make AR, augmented reality, more accessible for us here in India? You know, we aren't really a country where AR, augmented reality has taken off in a big way. This would need a major thrust and a major push here for people to actually become AR users. So how do you plan to do it here in India? Well, I think AR is a relatively new technology. And so no matter where we are around the world, uh, I do think it takes some time for people to learn about augmented reality. But we've actually been blown away by the response uh, in India and the excitement people have using our augmented reality products. So that's actually what's encouraged us to do things like, you know, roll out um, our Lens Studio workshops and seminars in schools around India. And, you know, I, I think uh, the, the reason why augmented reality is so much fun is because it really helps uh, people express themselves. It lowers that barrier to self-expression, uh, especially on, on Snapchat. And so I do think that's something that's universally appealing. We've certainly seen a lot of momentum around that in India. And I think, you know, as, as the camera evolves and learns more about the world around you, I think AR will become increasingly important because our camera will get very good at recommending the right lens for you based on what you're looking at or, you know, the friends you're hanging out with, that, that sort of thing. So if anything, actually, you know, we've seen a tremendous amount of visual fluency in, in India. People really enjoy expressing themselves visually. And that's just been so fun uh, to be a part of and, and to watch. Okay, sounds very good. Now, Snapchat was the de facto standard for millennials and for a very, very young audience. Now there are so many alternatives that the youth swear by. How do you plan to gain back the audience that seems to love TikTok and Instagram and everything else around that? Yeah, that's actually one of the things we love about this business. There's always you know, new innovation, new products coming out. And you know, there's lots of options that people have for all the different sorts of products they can use on their phone. And so that's why for us, it's been so important to focus really on what we're good at, uh, which is helping people communicate visually, express themselves with their close friends. And I think that's something that Snap that's really unique to Snapchat and the reason why people continue to come back to our service and, and really use it together with their friends. So I think there are going to be all sorts of different services on smartphones that people use for different reasons. And the important thing for us is to really stay true to who we are and continue to provide value for our community. So Evan, Snap launched a Real Friends advertising campaign in India last year. How do you see Snap's role in deepening friendship amongst a young digital native audience? And how is this different 
from the rest of social media. Everyone wants to be doing the exact same thing, right? I love this question because it really gets to the root of who we are as a, as a company. I think, you know, what we noticed very early on when we created Snapchat was that social media was very fi fixated on likes and comments and people only wanted to post things if they looked pretty and perfect. And so that actually left out the full range of human communication. You know, maybe 1% of the time you look pretty and perfect and you want to share that with everyone uh, to get their comments and their likes. But the rest of the time, you just want to express yourself with your friends and feel comfortable being silly or irreverent. Um, and we think that's really important. And so we designed Snapchat without likes and comments and with ephemeral videos and photos so that people felt totally comfortable expressing themselves with their friends. And I think that's really central to friendship, right? That ability to be vulnerable with your friends, to fully express yourself. Uh, that, that's, I think, what brings people closer together because it helps people develop trust. And so, you know, our product's been really focused on this since the beginning. And I think that is why, you know, especially during these really challenging times when people want to feel close to their friends, uh, that Snapchat is, uh, is really powerful. You know, what I love is the byline that Snap actually has. You call Snap a camera company. What do you mean by that? What does that even mean? Yeah, we believe this so deeply. And this, this actually really goes back to Bobby's core insight. Bobby started the, the company with me. And I remember when we were still in my dad's house, he, you know, he was like, gosh, Evan, you know, people use their camera 10 times a day instead of once a week, you know, which is how often people were using their cameras before because they were only using them for a birthday party or a special event. He's like, if people use their camera 10 times a day, we could make a really big business. And I think he was totally right because the nature of photography has changed so dramatically over the last, you know, five to 10 years because people have started to use, uh, you know, cameras predominantly to talk, not to save things that are important to them. And so that at the core, you know, of our business, uh, the, the camera is just so incredibly important because it empowers this new way of communicating, but it also powers our other platforms. So people use our camera to create the content uh, so that, you know, we've been able to build a content business over time. People use our camera to add uh, photos and videos to the map product that we have so that everyone can see what's happening around the world. So our camera powers all of these different products that we've created. So even though the company has become so much more, the camera is really at the heart of it. And we never forget that because we know how important it is. Okay, time to get into some controversial territory. Not very long ago, you had a pretty controversial redesign of the entire app. Users left, everybody made a hue and cry about it. Some of your senior management left because of that. What made you do it? And how difficult is it to introduce a new design, a new feature, when users are so comfortable with the existing UI or new features? You know, it's tough to take away what people have a comfort with. And would you do it again? Well, thank you for reminding me uh, of that. <laughs> you know, I, I think uh, you're right that change can be difficult and, and scary, um, especially when there are big changes. And so we made a number of really big changes to our platform, you know, especially separating content created by your friends from content created by professional content creators. And we really felt that that was the right thing to do um, because it allowed us to prioritize your friendships, which is, you know, really important to us. Um, but yes, that did uh, that did cause a little bit of controversy. I think the important thing is that you know if you're making these these big changes or these evolutions, you know, really in response to like a, a future vision or, or a bigger idea that you're working towards, I think that change can be worth it. Um, and in our view, the changes we made have really unlocked a lot more opportunity with premium content, but also more opportunity in terms of strengthening friendships. So even though yeah, that was a difficult uh, transition for our business and. It was not a lot of fun uh, to, to read the negative feedback. You know, we, we were able to iterate quickly and I think uh, still fulfill our vision and what we were trying to create, but also create a product experience that really resonated with our community. So taking those risks, uh, I think, are really important if you want to follow your vision and, you know, fulfill your values as a business. All right. Now, tell me, Evan, anything that is today's next big thing or the big thing today is tomorrow's dead and gone, especially on social media, where people abandon a platform and move on to the next, MySpace being one. They all think the next big thing is where everybody is. We have to be there also. How do you plan to keep Snapchat relevant in the future? That's a really good question. So I, I don't think there's any substitute for innovation. I think innovation is critically important in technology and we always have to continue to push forward and try new things. But one of the things that I think uh, makes Snapchat uh, resilient is that it's really a platform for people's close friends. And uh, even though, you know, technology may come and go, your close friends tend to stick around and they're really important to you. And so by building a business that empowers people to connect together with their close friends, 
that really means that uh, you know we have an opportunity to continue serving our community for a really long time because those friendships aren't going away. Those people are so important uh, to our community, and so. I think for us uh, that, you know, that uh, communications behavior and the way that we support those close friendships, you know, gives us uh, a resilience, uh, frankly, uh, as, as the business evolves. But that's no substitute for working really hard to innovate and, and delight our community, which is something that we really enjoy doing. Evan, they say the best way to get egg on someone's face is to get them to predict the future, especially in the world of tech. What will Snapchat 2025 be all about? Well, some things will certainly uh, be the same because we've been so committed to this vision for such uh, a long time and some things will change. I think, for example, uh, you know, today we have a number of different platforms. So I mentioned, you know, we have our communications platform, our camera, where we have, you know, AR, our content platform, our map. Um, so we have all these different pieces of our business today, and they're all, you know, on a different trajectory and sort of a different timeline based on when we started working on them. So our content business is much more developed today, um, but it certainly has a long way to go. And in India, we've been investing a lot uh, in new types uh, of content. So I'm really excited five years from now for all of the amazing creativity and content that will be on our platform. Um, you know, in terms of augmented reality, I think some of the biggest changes that, that we'll see are really around the sophistication of the camera and its understanding of the world around you. And so I think the Snapchat camera is really unique because not only does it understand the world around you, it also understands who you are and who your friends are. And so we're able to recommend the right you know, AR experiences or the right services based on a given context. And so over the next five years, we'll really be investing a lot in that and trying to create more uh, of those AR experiences that are contextually relevant to who you are and, and what you're doing. Okay, let's get into a personal situation. What about you as a person? You know, you head all the innovation and the new features at Snap as CEO. What would personally excite you to bring to Snapchat in the future? Oh, uh, that's such a great question. I, you know, actually, I think some of my wish list items are really, uh, well, there are a couple. One would be a huge breakthrough in battery technology. I think that would be transformational for the technology industry today. A lot of wearable technology or even you know, the Internet of Things devices uh, in the world, are, they're, they're limited, frankly, by battery capacity. Um, and that actually prevents a lot of really unique experiences that I think would otherwise be possible. There's certainly a lot of innovation coming there. There's innovation coming in terms of display technology. But I think there are some, some really big and important building blocks in hardware that still just haven't been figured out yet that will unlock this next wave of computing. So until then, there's going to be a lot, you know, I think, you know, another decade of innovation on smartphones, a lot of amazing new software. But during that period of time, I hope there are some big hardware breakthroughs that enable this vision of computing overlaid on the world, because I think that'll be really exciting and a more human uh, experience for computing. You know, right now, people are hunched down looking at a tiny screen all day long. And I think it'd be really exciting for computing to be overlaid on the world around you. So, you know, Evan, no interview is ever over until we throw in a few personal quick fire questions, right? So are you ready? Should we get started with those? All right. So the first one. They say for every successful person now, there's a mantra, and especially morning routines is a big way, a route to success. Some people wake up at 4 a.m., some do yoga, some chant, some do journaling. What about you? Anything special to start the day on a high note? No, it's, uh, it's pretty basic. But, you know, one thing I do try to make time for is meditation. You know, I do Kriya uh, meditation in the morning, and that makes a big difference. So I get up really early, like bright and early. Uh, you know, before our kids and get a cup of coffee and try to catch up on a little work. And then I have some time to meditate and then the day just gets rolling. So uh, nothing, nothing too fancy, uh, but I do really love getting up in the morning because it's that peaceful, quiet time to meditate, but also to get ahead on, on the work. All right. And we have to get you finally to come to India. You've missed out on that opportunity the last time the COVID-19 took care of that. But when you do finally come to India and it will happen. So what are the first few things you'd really like to do here? What would you like to see? What would you like to eat? And who would you like to meet? <laughs> well, I think, you know, the thing that I would most enjoy is just hanging out with our team. You know, I'm so excited by the, the team that we've hired in, in India. And I'd really love to spend more time with them and go explore. Uh, India with them and hear about, you know, what they love about their country. So that, that's always so fun for me to visit our team members around the world. And I really hope I have the opportunity uh, to, to meet them soon and, and to meet you. So. 
All right, Evan, thank you so much for speaking with us. We look forward to seeing you here soon and we'll make sure you have an absolutely awesome time here in India and an upset stomach every day. That truly is the hallmark of a really good trip to India. See you soon. Thank you so much. I really look forward to it also. That then was Evan Spiegel, CEO of Snapchat. Time for us to snap out of this show and move on to the next one. This is Rajiv Makni. Thank you very much for joining me on a very, very special and exclusive conversation and show. I'll see you next time.